U.S. Moved to the U.S. after about a year. I was like one year old, a little older. Where did you first live in the U.S.? First lived in Houston, Texas, and I lived there for 14 years. Is that where you started climbing? Yeah, I started at a small gym. How old were you when you started? I was 14. What did you do before that? Uh, I was a lacrosse player. I played for quite a few years. It's my main sport. It took a lot to like convert from lacrosse to climbing. What was the biggest reason for you making that transition? Um, I was like pretty small, pretty short, and it was uh, everyone was like kind of growing at that time, and so I was like, wow, this is just not fun. I'm just getting hurt all the time. And I got asked to join the team after the summer camp, and so I was like, oh, maybe I'll just try this out. If I don't like it, I can always go back. And yeah. I never really went back. Nice. Um, and so you were born born in France, grew up in the U.S., but you're a Canadian citizen. Mm -hmm. How does that work? So both my parents are Canadian. They both lived in Canada for a good part of their lives. Um, and so I was just naturally a... Canadian citizen. Okay, so that's why you compete for the Canadian national yes. team instead yeah. of the U.S.? Yeah. And speaking about that, so you are the youth junior bouldering and sport national champion in Canada, is that correct? Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, and how do you think your, your diet plays into your success, especially this past year? So I have started watching more what I eat. When I first started climbing, I really just ate whatever definitely played a big role in a lot of injuries I caught. Definitely mm -hmm. maybe ate too much, ate too much sugar, didn't watch what I was eating. But recently, I, in the past couple of years, I've started maybe focusing more on protein and less sugar and really watching more wholesome ingredients and less processed food. And I really noticed a shift. So you see, see a big difference with that? Yeah. So, yeah. You mentioned injuries. So you did you have a lot of injuries before you made that shift with your diet? Yeah, I had really bad tendonitis and I had some bad finger injuries and I like shifted my diet to, and it really just changed a lot. That, if that is, has your diet helped you train harder, you think? Yeah, I think so. Definitely, if I, if I don't eat properly before a training session, I can feel it. Um, if I don't have enough like carbs or protein and like before and during my session, I struggle with like my power or my endurance or I feel a bit low on energy and it greatly affects it so it's a big part of my training. Uh, walk me through a typical day as far as your diet goes whether it's like a training day versus a rest day versus a competition day. Yeah so my training days, rest days and competition days are all the same diet. I don't try not to switch it up so that my body is used to it especially mm -hmm. during competitions don't want to like shock my system at all. Mm -hmm. um, so usually I have oatmeal in the morning with some brown sugar and some fruit on top of sorts, blueberries or bananas. Um, and then I'll have a snack mid-morning, like an apple um, or a banana and then a bar. And then around lunchtime, I'll just eat something with protein, like PB&J is usually like what I'll eat with the peanut butter being my source of protein. Mm -hmm. um, and then before training, which is usually in the afternoon, I'll drink... Um, a protein drink that I make with protein and collagen and strawberries and bananas and almond milk um, and then during my training I'll have a banana with peanut butter or a apple with peanut butter something like that and then after I'll also have the protein with collagen um, and then for dinner I usually have fish or chicken usually like a lean um, meat protein 